as we dive into this sermon series, it's going to cause us to be uncomfortable. It's going to challenge us, but it's going to also help us to grow. So I pray right now that you help us to recognize where we are, but show us where we ought to be. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And the people of God said amen. Today I'm going to read from the Message Bible. The Message Bible, James chapter 5, verse 12 says this. It says, and since you know that he cares, let your language show it. Don't add words like, I swear to God, to your own words. Don't show your impatience by concocting oaths to hurry God up. Just say yes or no. Just say what is true. That way, your language can't be used against you. Today for our sermon series, the sermon series entitled, The Blessing and building boundaries. For the next month, we'll be dealing with boundaries. So part one of our installation is turn to your neighbor if you're going to help me preach today and say, neighbor, neighbor. I'm not sure if you know, I'm not sure if you know. but no, no, no. Is, is a, a complete, complete sentence. sentence. Some people think that being a Christian is easy. But I'm here to tell you it's not. There are several things that us as Christians have to really, really take time to work on. And the one thing that is very, very difficult for some of us to adjust to and to receive is change. Change is something that's very funny about God because we just established that he's the same God yesterday. He's the same God today. He's the same God forevermore, according to Hebrews 13 and 8. But the funny thing about him being the same God is that even though he's the same God, he's always changing something. When you come to Christ, he says, you can come to me just as you are. But as he calls us to come to him just as we are, he's also calling us and commanding us to change. He's also calling us, commanding us, and challenging us to change. The Bible says that he or she that is in Christ, you are a a new creation. So he's saying you have to come to me as who you are, but I'll change you into who I desire you to be. So today as we have a conversation, because that's what we're going to have today, we're going to have a conversation. Mark, I don't plan on yelling, but you know how that go. But at the end of the day, there are three areas that he told the Christians that you should experience change. These not my point, so don't mess up your paper messing with me. So three areas that the Christians should experience change is the first area is you should have change in your conversation. You should have change in your character. And you should also have change in your conduct. So when you understand that as a Christian, there are areas in my life that I have to allow him to change. But in order for those things to take place, there must be confession. There must be repentance. And there must be Conversion. So when you understand that my character is who I am, my conversation is what I say, my conduct is what I do. So I'm telling somebody today that what we say, what we do, and who we are is very important to God. So that's why it's good news to know that even in the midst of all that's going on, that this is an area that I can weigh my spirituality. This is a scale that I can use to weigh my integrity. Just coming to church doesn't make you change. 
Now, let me say that again because y'all ain't hear me for the people in the back. Coming to church don't make you change. It's actually applying what you learn at church that causes you to change. It's going to take some blood. I wish I had a witness. It's going to take some sweat. It's going to take some tears. It's going to take some headaches. It's going to have some upsets. It's going to be some setbacks. And you also going to have to deal with being set up. But it's good news to know that the Bible says that weeping may endure for a night. But joy comes in the morning. Could it be? That many people come to church and think that makes them a Christian? Hey, B, could it be that some Christians may want to change, but they stop at confession and never make it to conversion and repentance? Could it be that they're not allowing the Holy Spirit to get inside of them to change them because they're trying to change themselves? And as believers, we got to realize that it's sweet communion with God. That makes us more like him. First Corinthians chapter 6, 19 says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who's in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with all of your bodies. So he's saying, I need you to make sure that you honor me with all of your body. So how do you honor him with all of your body? You honor him by having a healthy mind. <sighs> Some of us don't take care of our mind and we can't honor him with our minds. So he says, listen, you got to have a healthy mind and a, a healthy mind will allow you to lead to a healthy body and a healthy mind will allow you to develop a healthy spirit. See, a lot of people are spiritually discouraged, spiritually distracted, spiritually anemic because they don't have healthy relationships. So when you have a healthy mind, you have a healthy spirit. Now you find yourself in a healthy space. Now the spaces that you go in that may not be healthy, you're now bringing a different fragrance. So now you realize that I've allowed myself to be changed. But in order to have change, tell your neighbor, there must be boundaries. It's because what happens is you go from moving from one way of living to another way of living. And anytime you change the way you live, you have to establish boundaries. Jesus, he gives us a very good example of the way he set boundaries. He didn't holler. He didn't cuss nobody out. Y'all ain't got to say amen. He didn't. He, I ain't going to say amen because he's going to know I be cussing people out. I know you do. He, <laughs> but I do, Jesus. You, you heard my amen, Jesus. My, he said my hallelujah belong to you, not him. So Jesus taught us that in order to sound boundaries, you can do them and be calm. He said you can do them and be confident. He says, and you can do them, but you got to be Calculated. I'm teaching Mark and he ain't even get to preaching yet. So you got to be calm, confident and calculated. So in order to understand this, you have to put the word no in the vocabulary. The word no is a powerful word. Robin uh, Shamar said that it's uh, the best productivity tool ever invented. And some people think yes makes them productive. But a no is what really shows pri pri priority and produces productivity. Here in our text today, the writer by the name of James lets us know that it's important to make sure you have boundaries because sometimes when you don't have boundaries, your mouth write checks that you just can't cash. So now you realize that I have to learn how to say no. But some people make people feel bad for saying no. Some people make you feel bad for having boundaries. So let me let somebody know they come a little closer, lean in with it. Y'all linked in for real too. So what you got to remember is this, that you should never allow people to make you feel bad for the boundaries that you set. Go one further. It's not in my notes, but you said teacher, so I'm a teacher. So you should be mad if you don't set the boundaries. Because sometimes we say that we don't realize that us not setting boundaries gets us in trouble 
with God. You, God ain't tell you to do that. I'm so tired. God didn't put that on your plate. You picked that up. Now you're talking about God, what's going on? So now you identify boundaries. Listen, y'all, I'm going to get to my points now. I got a couple minutes of this. So I'm, I got three things we're going to talk about, and then we're going to hold my side. I was going to talk. I wasn't going to holler. Let me bring my voice down. <laughs> Point number one is this. When you start saying no, because it's a complete sentence, first thing that's going to happen is this. Everybody not going to like it. Okay? You got to, don't be naive. I can't believe it. No, no, no. Go in it. Understanding that everybody's not going to like you know. But did I say they had to? Come on, stay with me now. They may not like you know. So the thing is you got to understand is that some people may not like you know because they're used to you saying yes. And something, the dangerous part about saying yes when you want to say no is now you're doing this for people to like you. Work it, pastor. Take your time. I'm a preacher to this Christmas tree because y'all don't want to look at me. So now what happens is, Rome ain't looking at you. I'm preaching to the tree. So now what happens is you allow people to invade your space. And now you got problems because you don't want any problems. <laughs> I'm a preacher myself happy today, y'all. So now what happens is you got to remember that everybody's not going to like you, but I'd rather you not like me. For setting my boundary. Then for me to not like me. For not, y'all ain't gonna help me preach for not setting a boundary. Cause either way, you're gonna talk about me. I'm gonna take my time, y'all. Can I get a couple of amens up in here, y'all? So you gotta know that everybody not gonna like my no. So I got you gotta be prepared for the reaction of people's no. So when you are prepared for the reaction of people's no, you understand that I don't have to explain my no. I'm going to get to it at the end. Say, B, don't hold it to the end. Put it in your pocket. I'm going to get to that at the end. Why? I'm going to let y'all know. So now everybody not going to like it. So you got to remember this, this. Some people will only ask you for stuff. Because they know you're going to say yes. And now you've become, you don't like it, I'll tell you anyway, an enabler when you are called to be a crutch. What's the difference? A crutch is something that you use temporarily. A crutch is something that you use for the season when you hurt yourself. So Mark had somebody on his team, I'm sure they got hurt and they may have been out not forever, but for a season. And the season that they were not able to participate in the game, they needed to have a crutch. But not only did they have to have a crutch, but they also have to have a cast. See, the crutch is what holds you up. The cast is when God keeps you in place just to heal you. So some people may have crutches, but don't have a cast. So if you got crutches and you don't have a cast, you have no intentions on being healed. You just like the attention that you get from the crutch. Some people don't want to be healed. They want some attention. So when you decide to let them know you've been on crutches for two years now and you ain't been to the doctors, you ain't taking your medicine, you ain't taking care of yourself. So today I will no longer be your crutch. You are gonna be mad at me either way, but me being your crutch is not helping you. It's hurting me. So everybody's not gonna like it. That's why Jesus said, if the world hates you, keep in mind, they hated me first. So you ain't the first one to be hated on. So understand that if you hate me for taking care of me, you could not have been for me. Because if you love me, 
you'll understand how important it is to take care of me. Because if I don't take care of me, I can't take care of you. So you may not like it, but guess what? I love it. And the last time I checked, my job is not to make sure you like it. My job is to make sure God loves it. So if God loves it and you don't like it, that ain't my problem. That's yours. But my answer is still no. I'm preaching. <laughs> I'm preaching. I, I, I say it with your chest. They said that thing. I felt I ain't asking nothing. I'm just preaching it. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> y'all getting it warmed up. I ain't, I was gonna do my y'all messing up my clothing now. That was <laughs> I was gonna do my practice. We're gonna come back to it. So now you realize everybody's not gonna like it, but God says, listen, I need you to make sure that you don't just go out here running your mouth and just adding words. And when people do that, you gotta be mindful of people who say things like, I swear to God. Let me explain why. Most people that say I swear to God, they lies. They be lying. Y'all. Let me help y'all. Can I help y'all? When people say, I swear to God, I put my hand on a stack of Bibles. I, 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 on, on my mother grave. Why you lying on mama? You know your name is Lionel and Lynette. Lie like a rug and a bug. So now you realize when people say that, guess what they doing? They try to convince themselves. The Bible said, I ain't got to do all that. Swear to God. No, I'm not swearing to God. So you going to do it? Come and get me, kid? Swear to God. I swear to God, I'm going to pay you back. <laughs> That's the one right there. I swear to God. I swear I got my check on Friday. I got you. going to be the first person. I ain't going to pay Uncle Sam. I'm going to pay you first. You first. But guess what? The Bible says, this. He says, don't, don't do all that. He said, don't swear by the heaven. Because that's God's throne. Don't swear by the earth. That's his footstool. He says, it's better to not make a vow than to make a vow and not keep it. Because sometimes this mouth get away from us. Last thing I'm going to say, since mouth getting away from us, Craig, I'm going to confess my sins one to another so we can be healed. I have gotten us into some stuff in my mouth. For example, long story short, the men's choir got to sing the 21st because of my mouth. So the other day, in a situation, I was hanging around with the fellas, and everybody was cooling it, cooling in the gang. We was kicking it, and somebody said something. Then I said something. And Tiffany made a statement about their choir. Then I made a statement about our choir. Mind y'all, we ain't had one rehearsal. We ain't sung yet. We don't know what we working with, but that's a whole nother sermon. I got confidence. So I said, well, what you saying? We going to have a sing-off. Rome slightly gave me a tug. Pastor, come on over here and sit down. I don't like that because everybody's not going to like it. He says, Pastor, you are getting us into something that, listen, you need to learn when to keep your mouth quiet. <laughs> Y'all done missed your shout because everybody's not going to like it. And Rome, he love his pastor. But Rome looked at me with this look like, Pastor, if you don't shut up you already got us in enough stuff you got to know when to keep your mouth shut so what am i saying you need to stop opening up your mouth to volunteer yourself for services that you don't feel like doing in the first place get used to it they ain't gonna like you know they're gonna think you mean they're gonna say you ain't never did nothing for me i can't believe you acting like that i'm trying to get to my second point but i'm just trying to prepare y'all oh what you gonna say no oh that's how we doing it now oh i thought you supposed to be a christian oh man let me find out oh all right that's what's up oh all right that's how we doing it now okay cool then you're gonna get a status on facebook everybody that said they on your back they ain't got your back if you got a problem with me you need to do me a favor and tell me don't sub me tag me I'm gonna let it I'm a, you know you gotta get clear I'm gonna let you on there then I'm gonna let you have it when I put you on there then I'm gonna give you a laundry list of all matter of fact the phone you text me on I'm gonna let it go let's go to my point say point number two you start telling people no, everybody not going to like it. Guess what? Now when you start telling people no, you have to make sure. Say establish lines and lanes. Oh, y'all, listen. Anything you know about driving is in driving, you have lines that's called lanes. 
Not sure about anybody here, but the purpose of the lane is to let you know where you can go over. Anybody has ever been in the church van, and if you ever been riding the van, you'll feel if you ever go a little bit to a side, it would do this little thing. Mark, you felt it because you be on them lines. It'd be like it'll do this little, it'll do this little, it'll do this little thing, <laughs> it'll do this little thing. Mark, am I lying? All right, y'all trying to make sure I'm lying, Mark. So, so, so you do this little thing. Lee, lady, you be on the line. See, don't be acting like that. I'm trying. I'm, I'm gonna put everybody out there. We, we be on them lines. I put me everybody in there. So what happened is when you go on a certain part of the, I didn't know it until I was driving one day, and I thought, truth, say truth moment. I thought we got a limit. <laughs> I was going through the dealer, Mark. <laughs> what did they sell us? Because what it happens is when it goes to a certain side, it automatically put you back in the lane. So me and the wheel is beefing. I'm, I'm, it's like, eh, 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 eh. and I was like, what is wrong with this? And I look at the dash. It's signaling, letting me know that I was out of my Lane. Y'all ain't going to help me preach this thing. So it was letting me know that the boundaries was here. And anytime you go outside of the boundaries, it gives you an indication. See, sometimes when you are letting people cross the boundaries, your indication light isn't coming on. Your agitation light is coming on. And you ain't got to cuss them out. You ain't got to holler them out. You just got to gently let them know. You in my lane. Y'all ain't gonna help me preach. And anytime you drive in your car, it's nothing wrong with changing lanes, but you have to use something called an indicator. I want to use indicator. I like the I words right now, Nikki. It's the indicator. The indicator is a way where I communicate, say communicate, communicate. boundaries. Some people are not communicating their boundaries, and that's why people don't use indicators when they come into your lane. You never told me that I can't just come in your house. You gave me a key. I thought it was Cooley in the game. You didn't say I had to call. Oh, I'm working it, y'all. Y'all ain't got to talk back. I'm going to look at this note. So it says you can never be mad at a person for crossing a line that you never established. And you telling everybody but them. It's not a boundary because you didn't indicate to me where the line was. So I'm just riding all over the court, all over the lanes and just left to the right and not using my blinkers. And you wonder why you got a lot of accidents. I'm teaching y'all. When you have people moving without boundaries, without using indicators, that's where the lines get crossed. That's when our signals get crossed. And we got flipped. You know, so that's what you got to understand that sometimes things get crossed and things get wired. That was Jay-Z who didn't know. So now when you let the lines get crossed and the lines get blurry, your job, say my job, my job. is to communicate, communicate. With, love with love and respect, and respect. the boundaries. Yeah. Say walk heavy, Pastor. I put it on my notes too. Some people think because they family. They don't have boundaries. In fact, because they family, they got boundaries. But, say but, it's our job to communicate the boundaries to them directly. Not through the kids, but to them. But, everybody, ah, first point, everybody what? But that's okay. You don't have to say you don't have to like it. Just respect it. <laughs> that's it. That's all. That's all. I'm, I'm taking my time. I knew I wouldn't get a whole lot of amens. I knew it. That's cool. That's why I make sure I dance at the first song. Hallelujah. Uh, I got mine. That's cool. So now you realize that in order to establish lines, you have to understand that there has to be communication. But some lines are very unclear because the communication isn't clear. And the relationship has conflict because that's inevitable. But just because, just because we have a conflict, can I take my time? 
Just because we have a conflict through communication doesn't mean we have to have chaos and confusion. We don't. That's not true. So, so just because we, we have a, 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 a disagreement or a difference of opinion doesn't mean we got to become disagreeable. So all I'm simply letting you know is that this is your line. So some people think, okay, I, uh, I don't want to deal with confrontation. But avoiding confrontation will make you passive. And when you become passive, you normally move from passive to passive aggressive. See what that mean, Pastor? That means that you'll let people slide and you'll give people a pass until you had enough. And you never said only take one. And now they took 10 and you done went crazy and got aggressive because you are passive. So it's not a matter of, uh, and some people just say, I don't know how to say it, so I don't say anything at all. God, help me say it, because you not saying anything at all, it's going to make you want to make somebody fall. Y'all ain't going to help me preach this thing. And you have to say, Lord, give me the words to communicate how I feel. And that's why the text says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Because so many people are saying yes when they want to say no. And they're saying no when they want to say yes. Say what you feel in your chest. That's right. Because guess what? You got to be courageous in this. Hey, can I tell a story about you? Your hair? Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. So this is a long time ago. One thing about your pastor is, and my kids have it too, I'm an honest person. Amen? So I have to learn how to cultivate my honesty. That's a fancy way of saying I need to learn how to say it nice. So <laughs> cultivating my honesty, so I made a word. I made my honesty. So now without my wife, we were boy, we were, were we boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. We were boyfriend and girlfriend at the time. So you know it was at least 14 years ago. So please give me a pass. I wasn't seasoned yet. So she had went to the head. I love my wife. Get her hair done, baby. Get it right. Go ahead, fry it, dye it, lay it to the side. And anybody that knows me, my favorite hairstyle is a wrap. Hallelujah. Shop. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Shabba, I see you, baby. Come on, come on. Say, come back, Pastor. Hey, I'm back. All right, so it's a wrap. So in, in one day, I, I, she went to the hairdressers. And when she went to the hairdressers, thank y'all for coming to get me. I was in the space. So she went to the hairdressers. And you know, fellas, when your woman go to the hairdressers, you can't wait for them to come home. They got that little smell. You know, it's a little scent. It's like, oh, I ain't sure. You, you, you got it pop, and it's looking good. So, no, you got to listen, y'all. Just listen. To my surprise, my baby walked in the door and she didn't have a rap. <sighs> she testified, Pastor. So when she came in there and she didn't have a rap, my heart was hurt. And I don't think I had, I think she set herself up. She not only didn't have a rap, but I, I love long hair. I don't like Brother Russell gave me one Mike, Thank you You can have your preferences All y'all cool I don't knock y'all Y'all might like them Short, tall, brown Whatever you like Short, tall, brown, round Whatever you like That's what you like, right? I ain't knocking you You might like them How you like them But I like long <laughs> And round <We> might <laughs> So you gotta realize She came I said, okay And I saw her head, right? And I said, oh, whoa And in my face was spread. I know I'm like, oh, girl, come here. What's up? Y'all see how I did. But this time I was like, oh, I was taken back. I said, oh, whoa. <laughs> then she said, well, this is where she went wrong. She said, do you like it? Ah, why would she ask me that wrong? <sighs> it wasn't a trick question. I told her the truth. She didn't ask me. So I told y'all I like long hair, right? So I know y'all probably trying to figure out well, what kind of hairstyle she had. Y'all ain't y'all answer y'all trying to figure out. She had, what's it called? Help me out. Small curls. They wasn't dropped. They, was, they wasn't dropped. They was high. They was high curls. They was low curls. No, no, no. I wasn't feeling it. No. Show something. No, I ain't no, I ain't no. Let me tell y'all this. 
She went, her hair was like this. She came back, her hair was like this. With these curls, that says, no, I don't like that. And I had an attitude. <laughs> Needless to say, I scarred my baby and she ain't got the hairstyle since. <laughs> so, so, I established boundaries. <laughs> no, but at the end of the day, I could have established that boundary a little gentler. I mean, I'm just, I get, I use myself. Some of y'all got some stories worse than me. So don't do that. She had to give an example. When she gave me the green light. So now what happened? I, I communicated with her what I like. But tell your neighbors now what you say. <sighs> yeah, oh, y'all do know. <laughs> so they do know. They just, okay. So, so it's not what you, Nikki, you got to work on it too. You're supposed to be taking pictures. You, <laughs> come on. It's not what you say, <laughs> but how you say it. So you can establish boundaries without hurting people's feelings. So baby, I'm sorry for hurting your feelings. <laughs> sorry, that, that probably was like 14 years late, but better late than never. Say point number three, Pastor, let's go. Point number three. <laughs> Come on, stay focused. Saying no, you, you don't already dealt with the people that ain't gonna be feeling you. You've already established some lines and boundaries. Stay in your lane, bro. This is my, stay in your lane. This simple that, it's my lane. And just, just uh, uh. You didn't even put a blink on. Have you ever had a, hold up, I'm gonna get to this point. I'm gonna get to point three. But have you ever been driving and somebody put that blinker on and you don't let them over? And they still trying to get over? Y'all ain't gonna help me shout. Why? I'm not letting you over. I'm going to crash my car before I let you over. I got time today. I'm up on the other car. You not getting past me. You're going to have to push me all the way off the road. Why? Because I established that I ain't letting you in front of me. What am I saying? And some of y'all, just because you let people put their blink on, don't mean you got to let them over. It's your choice to let them over. And say, Pastor, I choose, I choose to let over who I want. When you're stuck in traffic and you got a little jam and, and it's a, they, they just so happen to be fast. And you know that one person like myself who like to get into that right lane and try to ride all the way up because you know it's an accident and you get all the way up and now everybody want to leave you in the corner. <laughs> That's y'all too. <laughs> That's them too. So what happens is then you get mad when don't nobody want to, I know y'all see me trying to get up. We, we seen you ride all the way from the back of the line and try to slide up on the front and now you got an attitude. So since you did that, guess what I normally do if I'm on this side and I don't want to let them over? I leave them over there. Some of y'all miss y'all shout. Some of y'all need to leave people over there. In their lane. Point number three. Say it empowers emancipation. Ah, That's good. Just saying no. It, it, it empowers you. It's a beautiful thing when you get used to it. Anybody stop saying no lately? It's, it's free. It's, it's so freeing. Can you take me to the store? You even got a little team with it. No. <laughs> get a little fancy with it. <sighs> nope. <laughs> then you want to get fancy with it. <sighs> Sorry, I can't. And don't ask, and you be waiting for me to ask why. They don't ask why, but you give them a pass. So here, freedom is, isn't the ability to say yes. It's the ability to say no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody can say yes, but not everybody says no. Jesus told the Jews, he said, listen, if you believe in me, abide in my word, and you are truly my disciples. He says, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. So when you start establishing boundaries, it's your truth. And stop letting people make you change your truth. If you don't feel comfortable, you felt the pop. If you don't feel comfortable, say something. Stop allowing people to make you feel uncomfortable and put you in uncomfortable predicaments all because you are concerned about how they going to feel if you tell them, stay in your lane. Now you are, some people are slaves in their own house. Because that's what happens when you're bound. You're a slave. So now you are a slave to the opinions of other people because you're not comfortable with just saying no. So now you got people living in your house, eating up all your food. Every time I'm in the kitchen. 
You in the kitchen. You ain't cleaning, but you in the, don't say it, we in church. In the refrigerator. <laughs> Get the sweeping. Get the mopping. Now you, I ain't got no money, but you just loan, you just cash up that little ungrateful. Mm-hmm. I'm working, y'all. Y'all ain't got to talk back to me. So now you uncomfortable. You ain't want to put them in your car because you know they don't ever. I'm going to work, y'all. I don't care. I'm going to work. You don't mind. You cool. But at least act like you're going to. Act like you're going to sign me a long time, son. Fake it. <laughs> My wife do it all the time. We get to the register. <laughs> I love it. I love it dearly. I love it. She gets to the register. She only carry a purse. She... Mm. You get this one? <laughs> <laughs> she got a purse right there. She didn't check her purse. <sighs> I don't know where it is. You, you gonna get this one? No, that's a boundary. You can't keep hanging with people like that. I don't mind treating. But every once in a while, guess what? I mean, you know, my girl, B, I, was, I spoiled her. She worked with me. We worked well together. But guess what? So anytime I get a chance to feed her, I feed her. And so yesterday, she said, pass him home. You're going to get some food. I said, baby girl, yeah, I got you. So guess what my girl did? She knew I was going to pray. She probably did. And she probably just think, pass it. I'm going to get away with this day. So I ended up looking at my phone, and she cashed out me the money. I mean, she sent it Apple Pay. So guess what? I appreciated it. But guess what I did? I sent it back. But guess what? That's a thought that counts. Girl, you better come on with it. So what happens is you don't, people don't expect it. I'm teaching y'all. She appreciated it. She didn't expect it because she understands that I'm going to do it when I got it because it may be a time I don't have it, then I'm going to need it because it's better to have it and not need it, Quran, than to need it and not have it. So I dare you to let your neighbor know that I'm going to establish some boundaries and I understand that my freedom is found when I establish my boundaries. Do anybody know anything about a property line? Yes. Yes. Property line property lines when you have your space so actually when you bought your house they took you through and they walked you through and they showed you the inside of the house they showed you the upstairs the downstairs they showed you the bathroom they showed you the cellar they showed you the roof and then they took you outside and then they showed you and they established your property line and what that property line that you established did was it allowed you to identify what was yours and what wasn't and you also may have some people that have property their property line is not seen. So because their property line is not seen, it has to be communicated through the neighbors. So how do you know? Have you ever seen a neighbor who's super duper petty and their property line is like right here and they got cut the grass and instead of them just cutting all of the grass, these little Negroes will leave one stinking patch. Run that lawnmower down that lane, fool. What you doing, man? You... But the reason they do that, they don't have to. Because that's not, y'all ain't going to help me preach. Mark, let's have church. So I need somebody to know that you have established what your property is and you are no longer going to put up a gate because you're you no longer going to put up a wall because you're going to put up a gate. And the problem is so many people are not allowing their yes to be yes and their no to be no. And now they got everybody running through their yard. So look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, this month you're going to go ahead and establish some boundaries. And in order to do that, you got to learn how to let some people just say no. So say, neighbor, say no. No, you're not getting no money. Practice with me. No, you're not getting no money. No, you're not holding my car. No, I'm not taking you to the market. Say it with me. Say no. Why? Because what you have to understand is this, that everybody don't deserve a no. You have to establish who gets a yes and who gets a no. See, what happens is this. When other people are mean to us, we shut down and now everybody get a no. But that's not the way to do it, come on. The way you do it is this. You learn how to get a gate and every gate has a door and you simply learn how to open up the gate and let some bad stuff out but also let some good stuff in and while you're doing that somebody gonna be standing on the outside of the gate and says oh I know you said no I can't get no money no I can't hold the car no I can't get no nothing from you no you can't 
can't put no minutes on your phone. No, you can't do that. And they going to say what? They going to say, why can't I, Brittany? Why can't I, Tavian? Why can't I, Kia? What you got to do is this. Say, check this out. I don't owe you no explanation. Or neither do I owe you any justification. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. No, I don't owe you no explanation. Neither do I owe you any justification. But since I got time today, I'm going to let you know why I'm saying no. I'm simply saying no because I want to. Because I said so. Y'all ain't going to help me preach. Why? Because 2,000 years ago, Jesus said yes so I can say no. And I'm saying no to you as I'm saying yes to him. And sometimes my yes to you can cause me to say no to him. And the last time I checked, he lived and he loved me. Died and he saved me. And buried, he carried my sins far away. Rise and he justified me and freed me forever. And one day he's coming back. Oh, glorious day when I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shores. Very deeply stained within. Sinking to rise no more than the captain of my sea. He heard my despairing cries and from the water he lifted me. Now safe am I. If you are safe, stand on your feet. It says, Pastor, I'm safe. Oh, y'all ain't gonna help me have priest say, Pastor, I'm safe. From all dangers seen and unseen, I'm safe. From all weapons that are formed against me, I'm safe. So as I get ready to get my sermon closed, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of scream therapy. For those who don't know, at the old building, what we used to do is this. We would say on the count of three, I would get all of my anger, all of my worry, all of my stress, all of my cares, all my concerns, all my headaches, all my upsets, all my discouragement, all my disappointment, and I get him in a ball. And on the count of three, I want you to throw your head back, and don't you let your mask muzzle you, and open up your mouth, and just go on and shout a little bit. Says no, because I said so. On the count of three, says no, because I said so. It gotta have a ring. You gotta say, say no. You say no, because I said so. No, because I said so. Y'all ready to have choice? Say neighbor, are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Can I buy your car? Can you take me to work? Now high five yourself and say, self, it's time to empower myself for the freedom. I'm free to be who I am. I'm free to walk in my anointing. I'm free to walk in my purpose because no is a complete sense.